Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. If you're a renter hoping to get some rent relief out there because of all the overbuilding, uh, don't count your chickens yet. Doesn't look like we're seeing a whole lot of relief. Maybe we will, but the numbers right now aren't showing us much. In fact, there's an article that came out that said, despite the thousands of new apartment units opening for lease across Metro Phoenix each quarter, a rent cafe study shows 57.9% of renters aren't budging and instead are renewing their leases. Phoenix occupancy rate dropped to 92.4 at the start of the summer rental season, down from 93.5. Last year, according to the report on the nation's hottest rental markets, the Phoenix Metro saw its apartment unit supply grow by 1.8%. Okay, that's a lot of numbers I just threw at you. So what's it mean? Well, it means that 60% of you are saying, I'm just going to renew my lease. I mean, moving's a major pain in the butt. You didn't raise the rent. Okay, I'm going to stay. Stay on one more year. See what happens. Uh, the new ones that are coming on board, not offering any sweet deals yet. Most of them aren't finished. Everybody's waiting to see if we're going to get uh, rent reductions. You know, when we look on the MLS, we just don't, we don't see much because uh, most of these new apartment complexes, they don't show up on the multiple listing service. They they uh, they just those are just individually owned uh, units by investors or private investors. But there's also some other stuff going on, too, is when you look and see um, this chart here, which shows multifamily serious delinquency rates. Now, this isn't the renters that it's delinquent. It's the people that own the multifamily units. Did, are they making their payments? And as we got into last year, uh, the beginning of the year, uh, there were quite a few that were late, 90, 90 days late. Now that has come plunging back down, starting to edge back up. Unfortunately, from what I'm seeing and reading, doesn't mean that we're going to see a surge of foreclosures. When you've got a high a vacancy rate in the 90s, 93%, that's, that's a healthy number for people looking to buy large multifamily units. And we're starting to see um, some major corporations and the hedge funds just come in and, and gobble them up. There's one in Mesa that was purchased for $81 million that was just purchased by an outfit out of Beverly Hills for $113 million. They made a few dimes on that deal. Because they feel that the rental market's still going to be strong. Maybe not as strong as it is this year, but it's not falling off the face of the earth. So, and in our numbers here, I mean, we're not seeing any price relief coming here anytime soon. See, we hit a peak of $1.38. Uh, the average here is about $1.35 so per square foot. So that's, that's not too promising out there. We're not seeing anything coming down. And again, that's not going to reflect that great big apartment complex that you probably see next door. Now let's look at single family serious delinquency rates. This is quite the eye chart, right? 2002, the gray line is a recession. And it didn't really affect delinquencies at all. Now we all know what happened in 2008. That's a broken record. 2008, everybody was walking away, giving their houses back to the bank, foreclosures, short sales. And the like. And then you get over here to this recession we had in 2020, and it didn't last very long because so much money was injected into the system. So the delinquency rate went flying up. And then as people started, you know, getting their jobs back and everything, the delinquency rate went down. These are for single family homes. And now we're below 1%. So the doom and gloom of here comes the recession, and here comes the unemployment, and here come the late payments, um, we're, not, we're not seeing it yet. Now, an interesting number that came out this morning across my desk was this one. And this is contract ratios. I'm going to pull out the handy-dandy magnifying glass. In the 400 to 450,000 range in 2022, the contract ratio was 43.7. Last year, 105. That was a very good last year. Homes were selling. Inventory did not spike up, came back down. Contract ratio got healthy. But look where we're at today, 53.3. So we are worse. We are better than 2022 uh, by about 10%. Um, same with the 450 to 500,000 range. 
but not so good in the five to 600,000 range. We're sitting at a contract ratio 42.1 and a between six and seven contract ratio 40.6. Boy, look how bad it was in 2022. It was 29. So the contract ratio is looking a little tougher now for sellers. And uh, it's there's no indication out there that there's something coming that's going to improve. Now, uh, Chairman Powell is going to speak this week. And basically what the markets are waiting for is they're not going to announce a rate cut for July. That's pretty much baked in the cake. But if they give any indication at all that they are open to a rate cut in September, then the markets will react. All he has to say is things are looking favorable for a possible rate cut in September. We will continue to watch the numbers and that's all it's going to take. The bond market's going to react. You're going to see interest rates come down. Uh, should be a pretty fairly decent, at least a quarter of a point move. No big deal. Not going to help you with affordability. Um, it is going to maybe move some people off the fence, but I don't think it's going to be enough to get the market going. That's why I said the other day, looking ahead to fall, I don't see a whole lot changing, folks. I see it just kind of being the status quo, and uh, we're going to stay here while we wait to see if something breaks out add to that this utterly incredible turn of events on the uh, presidential election front uh, it doesn't really affect the general direction of real estate with the exception of people sit on their hands a little longer people like certainty the markets don't like uncertainty so these smooth numbers that we've been seeing even though the rates are higher than where really anybody wants them to be, but they're level, um, this might start to change. You're going to start seeing this move up and down and up and down, starting with the central bank saying something that it's either going to be favorable or unfavorable. The CPI number is going to come out again. Uh, that's viewed to be a favorable number in improvement. So this number that you've seen is going to start bouncing around a lot, but I don't see it changing the general direction of our inventory or our affordability issue we have in the valley. And unfortunately, like I started with, there's nothing out there that says your rent's going to come screaming down anytime soon. We are getting some relief. You're down about 3.5% year to date. That's a good start. We'll see what happens. A lot of complexes going up, a lot of square foot being built out there. So we'll see what happens. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com.